Welcome to the Women's Sanctuary, the podcast about tending the soul of women, sisterhood, and the rise of the sacred feminine. I'm your host, Arlia Hoffman. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today, our topic is healthy boundaries, as promised. And it's a topic I've been talking about for a while in a number of settings. And it's so important and it's changing all the time in the sense that our circumstances are changing around us, our personal life, our personal relationships, Um, even as as I speak, um, you know, culturally and politically, we're experiencing a lot of drama and chaos. And that brings up new issues for all of us around boundaries. So I thought it was a great idea to revisit this topic and hopefully bring you something new that you didn't know that you can use in your daily life with your family, with your friends, with your social media friends, um, in your coworkers that will help you navigate these relationships with your boundaries intact. And when you have your boundaries intact, and you understand what they are, and you're holding them, life gets a lot easier. Hmm, maybe I shouldn't say easier. Life gets a lot more peaceful. Sometimes it can be really challenging to hold those boundaries. But then you understand what's yours, what is someone else's, and you can let things go that aren't yours. And how freeing is that? I have found that when I exercise my boundaries, I feel a lot more freedom and peace. And I know we could all use that. So let's dive in. Um, The material from today's podcast is available on my website. So all you have to do is go and, you know, give me your email address and you'll get the PDF in your inbox. So let's begin. What are boundaries? And I've spoken some about this in the last episode. Of course, I'm, I'm always talking about boundaries because they're so important. Boundaries are, as Brene Brown has described them, what is okay and what is not okay for you. Very simple. Now, that gets applied in, certainly in your relationships, in your working life, in your social life, in your personal family life. But it also gets applied to you in relationship with yourself. What's okay for yourself? What's okay for you to do for yourself and what isn't? And so boundaries is also an inside job. And when you, when you understand your own boundaries for yourself, not even worried about anyone else, your own personal life and your inner life gets a lot easier and decisions become easier. And that's really useful. So boundaries are your values lived. They are your values as you live them. They are the things within your control. So if you value honesty, then for yourself, you're going to walk through the world with honesty. You're going to tell the truth, even when it's hard. What are your values? What's important to you? There are a lot of exercises, you know, online that you could find to help you map out your values. And I'm going to recommend one in particular, and I'm going to link it in the comments, by my friend Jeanette Dalglish. She lives in um, Australia, and she's a life coach, and she has this fabulous handout on on boundaries. And if I get her permission, I'll go ahead and stick it in the show notes because it's really, really valuable. So, you know, you want to go through some sort of exercise, and because it's always good to do this periodically, because our 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 thinking and our beliefs and our values shift over time. Take some time and discover what your values are, what is what is most important to you. If it's a top two, a top three, a top five, I find it difficult to get below five. 
but do some sort of exercise to find out what those are for you. Um, And maybe you can group some of them, but get down to three to five that really define how you make decisions and how you walk in the world. And then the types of boundaries that we're going to be covering and that you want to be thinking about are physical boundaries. Um, You know, your public and social life, um, your intimate life with your family, with your own body, in your home, in your workspace, and with your possessions. Have you ever thought about having boundaries with your possessions? I, this morning, went out into my garage where I have a lot of storage space and I have an art desk, and I cleaned out an entire section of art supplies that I thought I loved dearly, but I had not touched them in about 10 years. And so it was clear to me that they weren't a priority for me. They weren't of value for me. I had them because I thought I should have them. Some of the things were pretty, and I boxed them all up, and they're going away. That was setting a boundary with myself about something and recognizing that it wasn't a value to me and that I could clear it out of my life and make space for something else. Other types of boundaries are sexual boundaries. There's a lot of good content out there about you know, consent and respect in sexual relationships. We have spiritual boundaries. We have our core values and our beliefs. And so there are boundaries around that which we would engage in um, spiritually and in activities or reading or relationships. And then in relationship boundaries, we have several different kinds. We have the small ones, the small daily boundaries that are maybe flexible. You know, the things you have preferences around and they are your values, but they're not deal breakers. And then we have the large things, which are deal breakers. For somebody dating a smoker might be a small boundary, but for others, it might be a deal breaker. So those are relational boundaries. Then we have emotional boundaries. That's our level of awareness and responsibility for our own internal emotional life. Next are mental boundaries, our fears, our opinions, our own internal thinking, which is rigid and unwavering. And so there's a difference between a firm boundary and rigidity. And that's something we will get into later. And then there are legal boundaries. These are just the societal legal boundaries that we have to abide by. Uh, But we still have to be at choice about if we're going to honor those boundaries and abide by them. It's tempting to think that much of the drama and difficulty in our life is completely beyond our control. (laughs) But actually, there's quite, quite a lot that is within our control. But recognizing what is ours And what is not ours is a key piece to being able to honor your own boundaries and maintain them. So what can you control? What do you have control over? You have control over your words, your actions, your ideas, your recreation, your effort, your work your own mistakes, and your own behavior. The things that you do for yourself, to yourself, internally and externally, all of that is in your control. What isn't in your control is pretty much everything else. (laughs) Other people's actions, their attitudes, their beliefs, their words, their play, their behavior, their feelings, their mistakes, none of that's in your control. And it's so easy to want to control what other people think or say or do. And it doesn't really work. I mean, if it works, it creates a very toxic relationship. So we'll see later how how you can take responsibility for yourself and be able to let go 
of other people's stuff. Everything they do, which you don't have any control over. And that's where boundaries create that freedom for you to go, okay, all right, I'm responsible for myself. I'm taking care of myself and I can I, I can see you over there doing something and it's, you know, it's out of my control and you're over there doing that thing. And that's actually very freeing. Healthy boundaries are really a key to um, higher self-esteem and self-respect. They help you protect your physical and emotional space from other people trying to control you or intrude on you. They help you have equal partnerships and relationship where each person is taking responsibility for themselves and sharing power, and it creates much healthier relationships. It definitely helps you separate your needs from others. You know, when you get that clarity about what's yours and what's theirs, it definitely gives you a lot more of your own power back. So how do you know if you're ignoring your own boundaries? Well, I think that's sometimes kind of obvious, right? When when things are just falling apart or people don't respect our our needs, you can tell that something's gone wrong or wonky with your boundaries. Here are some signs. If people are forcing you to conform to a group norm, to a group identity, or you have forced yourself to conform to a group identity, that absolutely is a sign that you've crossed your own boundaries. Have you heard the phrase, go along to get along? Mm, yeah. That usually is a sign you have stepped over your own boundaries in order to save face, keep the peace, and to keep relationships smooth. I am such a, <laughs> I am, I am so guilty of this. I, this has just been a pattern of mine all life long because it was modeled to me to don't rock the boat. Don't rock the boat. And that's what keeps life peaceful. But really all it does is just keep you miserable. Other signs of ignored boundaries are feeling like a victim or a martyr, feeling resentment or aloofness, feeling cold or shy, feeling like you're being smothered or feeling like you're smothering others, feeling like you don't have any privacy and feeling like you're in a codependent relationship or someone is saying, I need you to need me. I want to come back to resentment. Resentment is a great barometer for ignored boundaries. If you feel resentful for somebody doing something or you're resentful for what you have to do for them, take a look, take a closer look. Because then there's a, there's a boundary there that you haven't been aware of or um, haven't honored. And so you can do some inner work to kind of trace that back to what is the value here that, of my own that I'm not honoring? And if you come if you come to the conclusion, well, they're not honoring my boundaries, then it may be that they don't even know you have a boundary because maybe you didn't know how you had a boundary. And I've had this happen for myself. So let's say you've got um, you've got a friend who shared a secret of yours with someone else. And that definitely can trigger some resentment. But did that friend know, A, that it was your secret, and B, that it was not to be shared? And so that's where you have to take responsibility for what you've said and how you've said it, and if you were clear about that. And then once you're clear, then the responsibility becomes your friends to decide whether they honor that boundary or not. So that's where... That's where the boundaries give you real clarity about responsibility. 
I talked about this on the last episode about um, Brene Brown's Living Big, Boundaries, Integrity, and, in, and Generosity. And here's where the generosity comes in. It is useful and helpful to believe that other people are doing the best that they can. That's generosity. So let's say you really love this friend. So you believe that she is doing the best that she can. And so therefore, she would not have shared that secret had she known it was not to be shared and that you wanted it kept private. If, however, she knew and she shared it anyway, here's where the generosity comes in. And stay with me here. When you adopt the perspective that they are doing the best that they can, then you release the expectations that they can or will hold your hold and respect your boundaries. So if you set a boundary and they say, oh, I get it. Yes, I can honor that boundary. Great. If they say, no, I can't respect that, or they do that by their actions, you have to take them at their word that that is the best they can do. If you don't do that, if you say, well, you could be doing better then you're setting yourself up for disappointment and betrayal because you're not acknowledging what is right in front of you that this person is not capable of honoring the boundary, right? It's like Maya Angelou said, when people tell you who they are the first time, believe them. It allows you to look at that other person's behavior and take it at face value as this is the best they can do. And then it relieves you of the responsibility of changing their behavior. See, it relieves you of the responsibility of changing their behavior because you're just going to take their behavior as their truth. And therefore, then you can make a new decision. If that person can't hold your confidence, then you can say, okay, I have a new choice to make. I will either no longer share anything private with that person or you may decide that person is no longer welcome in your inner circle. So those are things to consider and that's how generosity plays into holding your boundaries. So let's say you have sat down and you've done your your core value work and you know what they are, are you able and willing to to stand up for those? Are you able to raise your hand and say, I need this? Here's your permission slip. Take a deep breath. It is okay to have needs. It is okay to ask to have them met. permission granted to have needs. And it's okay if your needs are not the same as the people around you or are needs that you know the people around you cannot meet. That does not invalidate your needs and desires. Take another deep breath. It's okay to need what I need and to want what I want. It's okay. When you can own those values as your own and as important and hold yourself as important, it becomes a lot easier. You have permission to have your needs. It's okay if other people don't get it or if they're not able to meet your needs. And it's okay for you to change that relationship if they can't meet your needs. That may not mean terminating a relationship. Sometimes it does. But it could mean 
having a conversation saying, this is, this is where I'm at, where I'm at. And I understand you can't meet me there and that's okay. And I need to look at ways to get those needs met for my own sanity, for my own life and for my own value. And that gives the other person the opportunity to decide what they'll do. And it's okay to have emotions and express them. Now, I don't know about you, (laughs) but when I was growing up, it was not okay to have emotions. We were really expected to be rather invisible and to accept whatever was given us and whatever we were told to do without arguing. So for me, expressing emotion has become, has been a challenge, and I'm getting a lot better at it as life goes on. But it's, you know, give yourself permission to have emotions about your needs and your values and to be okay with expressing them. Expressing your own emotions is in a, in and of itself a boundary. It's it's a boundary you have set for yourself that you will give yourself the space to do that. It all comes down to who is sitting in your seat. This was a metaphor my teacher used, and I love it. Because if I'm tending my own boundaries and my own needs and values, I'm in my seat. I'm taking care of my life. But the moment I care more about what someone else is doing, what they think of me, what they need, and I ignore my own needs, I have left my seat. I can look back and see that seat is empty and I'm all up in someone else's business. I'm all up in someone else's life. Again, I say, who's sitting in your seat? Is it you? I find this metaphor so helpful because when I get tangled up in a situation, it gives me a great visual to go, oh, where am I? I am not in my seat. Let me go back and sit down. Let me sit down and think about my own needs and values and boundaries. So now I think some of you are probably saying, but wait a minute. What about the people I love? What about the people I serve? What about the things I need to be doing for my family and my job? And I say, of course, of course, You're going to have to meet other people's needs. You're going to have to serve others. But think about it this way. They are part of your values. If you love your children, serving them, feeding them, clothing them, nurturing them, that's a value to you. If you want to make money to support your life, then your job is part of your values. And so if you like your job, you're going to want to do well at it because it's important to you. Boundaries with love is fierce compassion. When you make your truth non-negotiable and put love for yourself first, then you are able to give with this big open heart because you know you've already taken care of yourself. And I've alluded to this before, but it also comes down to um, conversations, having a a conversation to negotiate an agreement. And I take this, this is a phrase that comes from um, the world of polyamory, and I love it. It's called, um, they're called agreements, negotiating agreements. Where are the places in your life that you have made agreements that you no longer like? Maybe you have agreed to cook every night. Maybe you've agreed to go out to eat every night. And neither one of those work for you anymore. It requires a conversation. And this is this is the place I see most people get hung up. They can 
decide what they want. They can understand what their values are, but they're too afraid to have the conversation. And even if they aren't too afraid to have the conversation, they approach it aggressively because they're already on the defensive. Well, I need this and you need to do it for me. Yeah, that's not going to be real effective. But if you considered an agreement that is just renegotiated, then you each are equal partners coming to the conversation saying, okay, so this is what my be- my boundary is and my need is. What is yours? And is there a middle ground where we each feel honored and respected? And maybe there isn't. Maybe there isn't a middle ground about a relationship or a value. But then you've had the conversation and you know. Because if you never have the conversation, everybody's walking around working on assumptions. And that's, that's problematic. The most loving choice for me is the most loving choice for them. Even if it doesn't seem like it at the time. The most loving choice for you is the most loving choice for them. It really is. And it likely, frequently will not look like it. I'll just say it. It won't look like it. Your logical brain and your ego will be like, oh my God, this is the worst idea ever. This is going to kill them. They're going to kill me. This is awful. The world's going to come to an end. And it doesn't. And if it does, if the relationship ends, it was probably for the best. So some of the questions I've gotten are, what are legitimate boundaries? What if someone is upset or hurt by my boundaries? How do I answer someone who wants my time, love, and energy or money? What if I am afraid of their anger if I set a boundary, which I just addressed? And what about a friend in crisis? What do you do with a friend who is always in crisis? These are tough places. They're not easy at all. I would say with a friend in crisis, you would want to be clear with him about what you can do. And if there's something you could do ongoing, let's say once a month, you're able to spend time with them or deliver them some food whatever you can do or you feel comfortable doing within your values, then just let them know what that is and then maybe help find them resources for the things that you can't do. But otherwise, you are not expected to be someone's savior. You are not expected to be someone's savior. Okay. How do I answer someone who wants my love, time, energy, or money? How do you answer? Uh, You know, every situation will change, but um, there are there are lots of ways to say things like let me sit with that for a day or so and I'll get back to you. There are ways to answer while standing in your integrity for the people who are asking something of you. If you don't feel able to give it, then you owe it to yourself to say something about it. Now, I'm going to address here questions of physical safety Um, trauma, dangerous situations, absolutely seek help if you need help. If you feel like you have someone in your life who is not honoring your boundaries and it's putting you in danger, absolutely please seek help. We are not talking about these life or death situations here. Those are absolutely different. If you feel like you are in a safe relationship, 
where you can be heard, then these are the types of things you would say. Things like, this is important to me and I want to feel heard. Or these are the things that I have realized are important to me and I need to set a boundary around them. Or this is who I am and this is what I need. I understand if you can't meet that need and that's okay, but this is what I need. This gives the space for someone else to make a new decision. And absolutely in any case of mental, emotional, or physical abuse where you do not feel safe, please, oh please, reach out and get help. And as I was just describing the ways that you want to establish these boundaries are with stating them calmly and evenly without aggression or you know emotion if you can help it because you're stating your truth and you just deliver it as a fact state the consequences of crossing your boundaries you know if you call me again after 10 o'clock at night, I'm going to have to block your phone number. Or if you keep sending inappropriate texts, I'm going to block your number. And here's where I see a lot of people make this mistake. Do not over-defend or justify your boundary. You don't have to defend anything that you need or want. Or your values. Now, if you're in the context of a loving relationship, let's say it's your best friend, your sister, your partner, and it's a fairly good, stable relationship, you may want to give them some context. You know, I've been thinking about it and I've decided that this is important to me and here's why. Or, you know, I've I've shifted my thinking about this and I, I, I actually want to change my mind, and I'm going to go in this direction, and here's why. But you don't owe them that. And it could be very uncomfortable if they don't understand, but it's not your job to make them understand. And I say that because if they are defensive or angry, they're only going to use that information against you. They will and I've seen it happen, they will pick apart whatever you tell them as your reasoning, they will pick it apart to change your mind. You really have to use a lot of discernment and your best judgment as to when you even share the reasons for your decision. Now back to boundaries, integrity, and generosity. Using that framework helps you keep it about you and not about the other person. Because when you can make it about you and it's not personal about them, you're much less likely likely to trigger their defensiveness. Take ownership of your needs and don't make it about them. When you own your perspective, no one can argue with it. It's yours and no one else's. So. If you say, you know, I am really, I am really have a lot of inner conflict and a lot of sadness and grief about eating meat and I don't want to do it anymore. I want to become a vegan. No one can argue that with you because no one can argue what your own feelings are and the value and the decision you've come to because of that. Can you feel that? I mean, people can be upset about it, but they can't argue with your own perspective. Next is a big one. Trust your intuition. You know, your intuition helps you discover your own boundaries and your own values and set those boundaries. And you have to trust your intuition about whether whether you, how you tell this person whether you tell them the explanation 
and exercise that muscle to navigate your way through these difficult conversations. Next in guidelines, address boundary violations early. So if someone has crossed your boundary, you know, letting it letting it wait a week or two or a month is can be challenging and counterproductive. Being able to address it early and have a conversation about it is so, so valuable. You know, employ your generosity and assume the best until you check in with him. Did you realize that what you told her was a, was a secret, right? That's generosity, assuming they're doing the best that they can. So I just wanted to check in with you and see if you remembered that that was confidential. And then that gives them the chance to say, oh my God, no, I had no idea. Or, yeah, but I thought you wouldn't mind, you know. And so that gives you information about what what they were actually doing and where their thinking was. And that gives you the opportunity to make a new decision then about how do I handle this and how do I treat this relationship now? So if you set a consequence for a boundary, you have to back it up. You have to block that number in that relationship or take whatever other action. If it's your child, maybe, you know, you take their, <laughs> you take their allowance or their toys away. Whatever the consequence, be prepared to back it up. I have a friend who, um, as a result of this work that I did in Healthy Boundaries, listened to it, realized that, the, realized that they had a difficult relationship with a friend that they needed to address. And when they set a boundary with that friend, things got really ugly really fast. But then my friend was able to go, wow, okay, I get it. This is not a healthy relationship for me, and I'm going no contact. And that was really, really hard. But that was about a year ago. And now, you know, my friend tells me, you know, I kind of miss the friendship, but I do not miss the toxicity and the problems in the relationship. And I'm so glad I ended it. You won't always have to end relationships, and I hope you don't. But this does give you the framework if, it, if that happens. Just because you are setting boundaries doesn't mean you're heartless. And don't let your brain tell you you are. It's quite the opposite. You are loving yourself enough to live your values. That's huge. Have compassion for the struggle and the difficulty and the fact that this will take practice. If you have people around you who do honor your boundaries, be grateful and thank them and say, thank you so much for that. That means a lot to me. You can care about other people's feelings and still have boundaries. Caring for them doesn't equal crossing your own boundaries. You can have both. You can have strong boundaries and love other people and have them respect your boundaries and love you back. That's what healthy relationships are. There is a mutual respect, a love. There's open-heartedness where you can be yourself. They can be themselves that's a healthy relationship. And so have some compassion for your yourself, for your own needs. Stand in those needs and values and let other people around you show up for you. Give everybody a new opportunity to say, I love you and I care about you and I honor your boundaries. Or, I love you and I care about you, but I can't honor those boundaries. Wouldn't you rather know? Wouldn't you rather know that they can't meet your needs, but that you care enough about your needs to stand up and say something? It all comes back to 
honoring yourself and your heart. And when you do that, the people around you get the opportunity to do the same and you can honor their boundaries and it becomes just a, <laughs> becomes a love fest of, you know, of respect, your self-respect. Now I have something here to say about betrayal. Um, when we feel betrayed, it is frequently a case of boundaries gone awry. That does not let the other person off the hook for their behavior, right? We're taking responsibility for ourselves and we're not taking responsibility for their behavior. They have their own responsibility. However, if you never said anything or you made an assumption that they would honor your boundaries and not betray you, or you assumed they had the same value and you ignored all evidence to the contrary, that, my friends, is self-betrayal. Self-betrayal is when you don't honor your own boundaries and you're willing to ignore You're willing to ignore all the situations that don't honor your boundaries. Does that make sense? A lot of times, people who've been in relationships and have been cheated on, they don't see it coming. And I'm not, say, I'm not saying they bear responsibility for it, but they bear some responsibility for the relationship itself, not for their partner's actions, but for the part of the, their part of the relationship and their ability to recognize boundaries that may have been crossed. And so our relationships are a mirror. So the places where we betray ourselves sometimes invite that betrayal. And please hear me clearly, I'm not I'm not victim blaming. It is a multifaceted situation when there's a betrayal. And so the other person, who, the one who betrays, bears the responsibility for that betrayal and the consequences of that action. And the person who is betrayed bears the responsibility for understanding what might have been out of alignment within themselves that they didn't pick up on something or where where might there have been a boundary they didn't hold and i know that's difficult to hear because it is not black or white it's never black or white there are well i'll just say it there are relationships that even if you have someone that most people would consider well, evil or mentally unstable or mentally ill, there's still something in the person that's relating to them that may not be holding their own boundaries. And so if you are in a relationship with someone who's, who has a mental illness um, or an untreated mental illness particularly, this is a, this is a challenging a challenging exercise for you. Um, you know, holding your boundaries is really, really important. And you may not feel like you are able to or want to leave a relationship if the other person can't hold those boundaries. So there are no right or wrong answers here. This is where your intuition and your heart and your inner work come into play where you have to really take a deep look about what are my boundaries, what are my values, and how can I love and serve the people in my life with the most self-respect and self-care and self-compassion. So that is just the tip of the iceberg for sure with boundaries. I hope this has been helpful if you want the um, PDF that goes with this, again, it's on my website at thewomenssanctuary.com. 
and we'll be happy to make that available to you. That's it for us today. If you like this podcast uh, or any of the episodes, feel free to, you know, like, hit that subscribe button. Um, You can find us anywhere where you listen to your podcast, whether that's Spreaker, um, Spotify, Apple, Google, we're on all the major outlets. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful you're here. And uh, we will see you again next time on The Women's Sanctuary.